All right. Sometimes you get perks of being a YouTuber. And this is one of the perks that I absolutely love. Getting access to the tech early on so that I can share my views and I can actually uh, quench my thirst of exploring the new tech as fast as possible. Uh, but this is something nice. And I really, really am glad to say that I got an early access of IDX. Actually, one of my friend got a very, very early access to it as, uh, as soon as the project was released, even before then that. Uh, but I'm about to get that officially uh, very soon. I have communicated with the Google team and hopefully I'll be getting it soon. So let me tell you the context of it. Let me share my screen first so that you can also get that. Uh, that's really, really interesting. Oh, by the way, Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the official first look of how the Google IDX project looks like and what you can do with it. Given the fact that it is in pre-pre-pre-early beta release, it's not yet out for public, it just is a testing they're testing out with a few hundred people only and only. It's not a, a kind of a review of the product, it's not, we don't do reviews and stuff like that, it's just a first look. I'm excited about it, that's why I'm making this video, that is all, that is all about it. Uh, so by the way, uh, just let me share the screen. And by the way, a uh, big shout out uh, to this guy here, uh, Dhruv, Dhruv Gandhi. He gave me the early access. We met during my visit of uh, Device, a great company. By the way, I'll be talking about them in probably the next video. We'll be exploring their product as well, which is killer product, by the way. Uh, so we'll be talking about them in the next video. Uh, but this is the man behind. And thank you so much. A big shout out to Dhruv. Uh, for allowing me to use his account. In the meantime, I get the access of it. So this is officially the Project IDX public preview. It's not even a public preview, I would say that openly. It's just a very closed public review. It's not meant to supposed to go out, but hey, this is a public product. So he'll be testing it out. So no opinions there. And as you can see, inside the Create a New Workspace, we have just a few options here. New web app, uh, frameworks using simple or simple HTML CSS or frameworks. We'll be exploring that. We can build Flutter app. Obviously, Google empowering the Flutter, no big deal there. Uh, and we can also create a blank workspace. I think that is going to be very similar to the GitHub code spaces that you can create a blank space, workspace, and then you can inject whatever the things you need to install, maybe Node, maybe Django, maybe Flask, whatever is your interest, maybe Ruby, you can just go with that. You can start with a repo as well, and very soon they'll be bringing up uh, Python, Go, AI, Pretty much everything is coming in, so a lot of checklist is there. Now, if I click on this web app, as you can see, we have the blank, we have Angular, we have React, and we have Next.js. And we have more options to click on. We have View and Svelte. So I really like the way how they have done it, View and Svelte. Just these are more options, but I'm pretty sure they will be scrolling it as well. And you can just choose the language to have the bundlers be installed, I guess, for JavaScript and TypeScript. We will be doing that. First, let's explore that. And enable Nix for this workspace. And probably I can just click on this and we can have the Nix and we can study about that. So customize the IDX environment. I don't think so right now. Uh, we can uh, just use the early release feature. Obviously this will break, but this is how you can actually have the packages and everything. So obviously configuration will be there. It's always there. So that's the first part to explore. Then we have the Flutter app. Now I would be super, super happy to explore this in a minute because I think Building the mobile apps within the power of clouds, uh, cloud servers of Google, that is going to be the game changer. Like, I don't know if you can think the power of this or not. Uh, I would say just, just imagine this, that you don't need fancy laptop. You can just go with as minimum of a laptop possible and you can have the reliability of uh, the entire Google with you. I know you might be thinking, hey, Tish, why are you so excited about it? Because I have seen the changes firsthandly. I have seen the people who are in the villages not very apt with the financial powers and they're just buying the bare minimum laptop and doing everything in these browsers itself. There is so much of them already. But one thing that was missing and stopping people from using that were mobile developers. You need fancy systems, something like MacBook Pro, which costs 2.5 lakh, probably more than that. But now the same thing can be done with the bare minimum laptop. Just fire up the browser and that's it. You can just buy the as minimum configuration Windows laptop. It can run the browser, that's it. Or you can just, everybody can just buy a MacBook Air. That's it, beast of a laptop. You don't need high-end configuration. AI to mobile dev, everything is there. I think that is a great future. So anyways, uh, that's, you think that's where my excite, excitement comes up because this is a new leap of faith which we are taking here. So right now it's just Flutter app. We will obviously be creating a Flutter app as well. Yes, it, I don't care if it this video takes an hour or something. I'll be just exploring everything that they have to offer. 
Uh, let's check out what they are actually offering in this one. So what more is about to come? Uh, there is an issue tracker. No, I didn't want to go into issue tracker yet. Uh, so I'll be just going back, import a repo and blank workspace. How does that look like? Nothing. So we'll be exploring each one of them. Let's start with the web app. So <laughs> let's create a new web app. Uh, what we should start with? Probably Next.js mm, or React. Classic React or Next.js? Next we'll go with the Next.js. Uh, we'll call this one as a YouTube uh, IDX. And just let's just create this and let's see how powerful you are to set up my environment. And new IDX workspace. IDX has a limit of two workspace per user. Please delete. Ah, that's, that's interesting. So they are releasing this. So I think I need to actually close. This is... Uh, the workspace and debaskets, so I don't think so. I can actually go ahead and delete any one of them. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this. And this is actually finalizing. So this is Dhruv's uh, workspace. So I never knew that actually they can just get started with that. A little bit slow. So actually, let me pause this and ask if we can uh, flush out some of these apps. All right, so just ask Dhruv that, hey, is there anything sensitive or something like that? Because obviously it's his account, so I need to be careful that not all the things can go on YouTube, and especially the company stuff, but this is okay, this is fine. I just opened this package here. There's nothing, it's just a bare minimum, bare bone project that he has created. Uh, nothing going in there, just a theme, Flutter data, and stuff like that. I was excited about this one. Uh, this is a bare minimum project, that's how it works. When you first time run your Flutter app, uh, in the web, looks great. This is where I was excited about that how they are bringing in the simulator of mobile phones and plethora of phones in the browser, but sadly it says coming soon. Uh, doesn't bring my excitement down, but a little bit disappointed. That, like, this is where you should start. This is something that nobody was able to do. Uh, so one thing I would like to mention this, that since this ecosystem is going to be closely attached to the Google Clouds, Obviously, eventually you'll get the idea that, hey, in the IDX itself, you can just build the mobile apps, can have connection with the Google Cloud, closely attached and associated with the Firebase and whatnot. And you will be able to set up the pipeline such that you can build your apps and can push it directly onto the store. How cool that is. Uh, <laughs> that is super, super cool. Uh, but anyways, this is a little bit of a bummer for me that, hey, you know what? Uh, I cannot run the Android apps. I don't know how they'll be. This is almost like a VS Code-ish environment. You can see there is a Firebase, there's a Project IDX, there's a Flutter. So some of the key things installed. Uh, so if you see the Firebase icon here, hmm, interesting. How closely they will be integrating it, that's also a question which is not right now integrated. First look, beta, this is how you are supposed to get all these things. Uh, but okay, okay, now the interesting question, how do I go back? And there is no such answer about that. The UI is, okay. Uh, I cannot just click on go back and just go back like this. Can I? Oh, that, that's, uh, yeah, I, I can actually just press the back and I can go back. Uh, so now that I know that this was just a bare minimum project, sorry, Dhruv, uh, I'm going to delete that. Uh, hopefully there is nothing <laughs> interesting there. Uh, please type delete. I can do that, but hopefully Dhruv doesn't kill me after this. <laughs> All right, so we have only the accessibility of having two workspace. Two workspace only. Won't be killing the debasket because I think that's important. Uh, let's create a new web app and see how good that is. So next app, and we'll be calling this one as YouTube. And create this to see that uh, how much time does it take. So this is now setting up the workspace. Obviously preparing a VM for me. Let's just wait. Let's just wait and see the actual time it takes to set up. And obviously I don't think so. They have actually opened up the full throttle because it's a very few users. So probably the scaling and all these things a little later. Not for this much of the closed previews. Pretty good. Pretty good. You can see the same kind of a speed and stuff like that is on the GitHub. But hey, let's see how does the first project looks like. Light theme? Nah, give me the dark one. Yeah, Now you're talking. All right. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I can see already some of the interesting stuff's going on in there. So package.json, what's your, any color coding? Uh, left, you can write the code. On the right, you can see how your app is behaving. All simulation, all the VM. <laughs> this is cool. Taking a minute or two to actually get set up. There we go. We have the boilerplate of Next.js. Pretty good in the package.json. Read me now. In the package.json, ah, oh, come on, don't want to open it here. In here, 
package.json. So we have the bare minimum basics up here. Uh, can I open up? Oh, I can open this up here. It's VS Code. It's VS Code. I, I love the big fonts. Uh, so dependency is nice. Fonts is also decent. Not the favorite one. But what's interesting for me is there is a file known as moonspace.json. So there are some of the commands being written here. What is the syntax and the structure of this moonspace JSON? Because I think this is probably controlling how my file, how my VM should be. And if I want to actually explore more on the IDX, uh, IDX AI, I think uh, actually Dhrup told me this, that right now nobody has access to Kodi. Only 50 selected people have the access of Kodi. And uh, once it has rolled out to more people, you can ask question directly to here, especially how do I center a div? <laughs> oh man, that's fun. But I think this is good. Nothing extraordinary I was expecting. So where is the configuration? You are in the built limited preview program. Yes, I know that view docs, but how can I change the configuration of this machine? Okay. Project IDX settings. Oh, built in. So there will be a plugin which will help me to actually change the settings. So that means there will be obviously a JSON file. All right, pretty good, pretty good. And again, this is by the way, exploring all together. You are also exploring it same time as I am doing it. Enable inline code completion, that's basic. But I want to see that how much RAM is there, how much space is there, is it connected to my GitHub? What should I do to connect it to the GitHub so that I can make a direct push? Uh, that kind of a thing. Open dashboard, what's that? Oh, to external website. Ah, that's nice, that's nice. Okay, uh, not really that much of a grade, but hey, if I can just go into the app, and I can see all the layout and page.tsx. So much of the fun stuff. And let's close this one, close this one, close this one. Hmm, there's nothing much interesting going on in this one. And how is the developer experience? I cannot share the developer experience until unless it is fully available to me. Auto reload, that's nice. Uh, let's just go ahead and say that H1. Hmm, okay. Fairly fast. Hitesh from... YouTube, oh, if I can write that. Do we have Tailwind and other things configured? Basic, okay. Decently fast, but I would need a little bit more power to actually explore that. All right, let's see what else is there to explore. And going back, I don't really like the going back on the homepage as an experience, because I think it would be like if I'm into the Zen mode of writing the code, there should be some way to move into this screen because maybe I want to fire up more workspace or something. This needs to be rethought. Uh, in the blank, I have no idea how to configure the blank because probably I need to read more docs onto this one on the IDX. How can I customize the IDX environment? This needs to be there. So the commands are there, but any example would be really nice that how can I change some of the configurations? Like I don't want node, I want... Uh, so here is the packages. So any other example would be really nice that how can I, some sample examples, like, hey, this is how you install the node packages. This is how you install the Python packages or a Python-based environment or a Ruby-based environment. So I think some more examples would be really nice. Uh, debugging failures, new configuration. So I think this is where you can inject some of the sample examples for me. And I would love to test them out. <laughs> yeah, this is this is how I always explore the new stuff. So I think this is okay. I'm okay-ish. I would have been much more impressed if on the day one you have rolled out the Android in the browser itself, just like Expo did it. And these days, a lot of people don't even know that you can build the React Native apps without the Expo. This much of the power it actually brings up. And I think this is a wake-up call to everybody, to Replit, uh, to Code Sandbox, to Stack Blitz, that, hey, somebody is working on a mobile and is actually bringing in. So time to hire some engineers from Google to actually build your project as well. But pretty good stuff, pretty good stuff. I like this, and I'll be keep on updating you and updating myself as well that what's happening in the Google arena, what they are pushing up next, what they're killing up next, we'll be talking all, all of that. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed these kinds of video exploding together, I can make more of them. Let me know in the comment section and let's catch up in the next video.